Hi, I'm Michelle Beckham Corbin. And I'm Mark McCumber. Welcome to our new show. Digitally Speaking. And just a little bit about Digitally Speaking and, and what that actually means. Mark and I decided to put together a show about all of the things that are going on in the social media and digital media world to provide some information that will be helpful for you, our viewers. And the digital world is a very, very wild world, and there are a lot of different topics that we're going to cover uh, during this new series that we're hosting through ACTV. So we'd like to thank ACTV for being our sponsor. Yep. And um, we've got some great, great topics for you. And you might be wondering um, who exactly Mark and Michelle are. So I thought we might uh, start the show off with a little bit of background about ourselves. And I'm going to go ahead and let Mark start and tell us or tell you all a little bit about um, who he is and what he does. Well, Mark McCumber here, and I have a, uh, a business, which I won't share with you because sometimes we just don't want to, you know, pitch our businesses, but uh, I have a broad background in architecture, design, construction, and entertainment. I've been a professional musician, touring musician, and uh, songwriter, singer, performer, and lots of, I've done some other things as well, but that's the basis of my, of, of my background, and uh, hence why I'm here. Yeah, truly what I would say is uh, like a renaissance man. So, Mark, the way I look at it is you bring such an incredible background um, to the show that I, I think that uh, when we get into talking about all of the different social media platforms that people are using today, that your breadth of experience, I think, is really going to shine a light um, in helping people to kind of try to figure out some of these things. Sure, and you as the marketing professional with, with the background and really the, the how and why and the wherefore of all this works and how it interlinks together, um, is going to be a great contribution. So I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I actually, as you know, cut my cut my teeth at Procter & Gamble. So I spent 15 years there um, doing marketing and customer business development. And um, for the last five years, I have worked in the social and digital media realm. So I own my own... My, yeah own my own business and I'm really excited to be able to share the knowledge that I have of social media for um, the viewers that are out there not only for their personal use but also um, for any business folks that might be tuning in um, you know our hope obviously is to be able to share some tips that can help make their businesses run a little smoother with some of the digital tools that are available to them it, it, it's such a again as I said a wild a wild wide world of, of wild new, too. <laughs> it was wild, wide and wild, uh, that's, that's quite an alliteration, um, of so many different ways to navigate through this incredibly complex series of different uh, digital applications, whether it be with phones and computers and websites, and how does all this integrate? And so hopefully we're going to cover a lot of these topics in our show and, and get, get the word to our, our good our good viewers at home and um, if you have any questions certainly uh, shoot them into ACTV and we'll put them on the list of things we like to get answered but uh, there's just a, a lot of topics that we're going to cover so yeah, you know, and, and that is a really good idea. If um, as you're viewing this show or, or future shows, um, sending a question into ACTV would be great. Or if there is a particular topic that you would like to really see us kind of dissect, we'd be more than happy to kind of add that to our to our list. Because we're still wording, working on the tweet option. As I talked to Andy yesterday, Andy's working on the tweets. He's going to get us all lined up so people can phone in their questions to us while we're on the air. So Yeah, and you know, actually, that, that brings up a really good point. We need to create a um, hashtag mm -hmm. for the show so that while you are watching, you could tweet us sure. and use that hashtag, and we'll be able to um, capture your, your comment or your question right away. Finger on the pulse, everybody. So Yeah, I've, I've got, my, got my smartphone right here. There it is. That's great. <laughs> Well, let's chat a little bit about uh, some of the topics that we're going to cover because we've talked about a lot of different things. And as we kind of reel this in and work our way into this very first show that we we get folks oriented a little bit, let's let's discuss a little bit about some of the topics that we're going to probably cover over the next several uh, weeks and or months. Right. And, you know, and, and as you mentioned, there are so many things out in that Wild West, you know, so many tools for people to use. And I think 
When you look at the plethora of options, I think number one, it can be very overwhelming for people. Again, whether you're a, a, a business person looking at the tools for your business, or whether you're just a person who's looking for some fun things um, to be able to connect with other people or to make your own life easier, right? There are many apps that, that do some things for us that um, simplify our lives. Mm -hmm. But seeing that long list, we kind of joked, you know, before yeah. the show started in terms of how many apps are there really out right, there, right? Right. And so, and how do you start, and, and how do you sift through them, and and determine what's, um, you know, the best for you? And I think beyond um, beyond that point of, of the variety of, of options that we have out there um, come some kind of realizations in terms of, okay, if I'm going to use these tools, if I'm going to play in the sandbox, how do I protect myself, mm -hmm. right? What are the privacy concerns? You know, are there settings that I should be aware of? Um, you know, many, many other kind of deeper topics beyond, well, what is this particular platform and how can I use it and what's fun about it? It, it's so broad and vast that you could spend your life probably educating yourself about all the different apps and how they work. But I think, I think one of the things we're going to really try to do through this show is help our viewing audience distill through all the different things that are out there, all the possibilities of how we're going to be able to help get people directed into the things that, that they need that will actually apply to their lives and their careers and their personal situations. And um, there's a lot to discuss. There's a lot of topics to cover. So we're going to we're going to try to touch base on all of them. But um, one of our discussions really was probably the most prominent and one of the most uh, one that's in the forefront of all at the moment and one making huge advances. We were just talking about new apps for mobiles by Facebook. Right. And Facebook has just been revolutionary in turning the digital, digitally speaking world upside down, so to speak. Absolutely. And I, I think at this point, um, you know, the majority of Americans have heard of Facebook and, and you know, and, and even a very large number are on Facebook right now. There still are some of the diehards, you know, that, that don't want to have anything to do with Facebook for a variety of reasons. But um, this has come to be the place where mm -hmm. people are playing. This is where they're sharing information about mm -hmm. their lives and, um, you know, photos of that vacation in Hawaii. Sure. Um, you know, news that's going on. And it's, it's really become a hangout. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I was looking at a statistic earlier today. Um, Facebook came out with um, some information showing that um, at this point, a little over 50% of Facebook users are using Facebook on their mobile phone. So they're using the mobile app to actually conduct their Facebook business. And uh, boy, you know, when you talk about mobile phones, smartphones, et cetera, it's how portable, right? We're, we're taking mm -hmm. our phones with us everywhere we go. We're in a 24-7 mode, mm -hmm. and Facebook is right there with us, yes. which allows us to capture every single moment of our lives, right? Sure. Maybe to the uh, uh, detriment of some of our friends. Sure. But, you know, um, when you talk about settings, there are ways to turn your friends off. So if you do have that annoying friend that's, you know, posting 50,000 pictures of their kittens or maybe it's political time and mm -hmm. uh, you're just kind of tired of the message, sure. you know, against your, your uh, uh, candidate, et cetera, there are, there are ways to, to tone those folks down without defriending or unfriending them. Sure. So we really should have no fear about Facebook. For those of you who are apprehensive and have some Facebook anxiety, uh, no need to be faceless on Facebook. We were discussing this yesterday <laughs> a little bit about uh, I was being um, friended by some folks who chose to be, remain faceless on Facebook. And I said, well, that was a criteria for me. If they were not willing to put their face on Facebook, then something's wrong with that. But truly, there really there are so many ways to protect your privacy and so many settings and so many ways that you can just pick and choose how you want your Facebook to look, how it functions for you, and, um, and, and your business. Right. So, so, you know, when we're talking about um, personal use, which would be a Facebook profile, I really urge um, anyone who's watching this show, when the show's over, don't do it now because you'll lose us, but when the show's over, really go into your settings and check each one. And you may say, well, you know, Mark and Michelle, I, I, I looked at my settings, you know, a year ago and I, I did all the things that I needed to do. 
one thing about Facebook that is constant is that it's constantly changing. And so um, I always encourage people, you know, maybe once a quarter to really go back in and make sure settings haven't reverted back to the default mm -hmm. just to, to make sure that you're covered. And then the other piece of information that I always tell people is that, um, that yeah, we're talking about privacy settings, but in reality, there is no such thing as, as true privacy on the internet. You know, we could have our profiles locked down to the tightest settings, but we could still have a very good friend who is privy to our information mm -hmm who copies it and, and sends it someplace else or, or mm -hmm. does something that we don't want with it. Um, so I think a good rule of thumb is to just be really mindful of, of really what you are sharing um, and just to make sure that if for some reason your settings changed or you had a renegade friend, you know, and that content did make itself public, would you be okay with that? Mm -hmm. You know, and if you would be okay, then, then you're, you're totally fine. So again, there, there are many, many ways to navigate through Facebook that, that will work for you. And it's an amazing tool. I mean, from a marketing standpoint or professionally speaking, and we were chatting uh, casually about everyone this day and age basically has their own brand. Um, we as people kind of are just getting into this whole digital media, if you will, and have the ability to promote ourselves uh, personally, professionally, you know, whatever the medium or the message that you're trying to get across. And um, Facebook is just kind of the, unfortunately, the ultimate tool at the moment for doing that, besides your own websites, et cetera, that, where you really get more specific. But it's a great augment to uh, websites, and we were chatting about that a little bit. Right. So and, and that, that brings, brings us kind of to a really good point. Um, when you're talking about kind of business use and creating that brand, um, whether it's for your company or, or for a product or even, let's say, for an event, let's say you've got... Um, Anderson Township has Walk to Remember, so maybe they want to promote that that walk or that race as its own brand. Uh, people can use Facebook to do that, and they use what's called Facebook pages or business pages. And the business pages have completely different functionality than a profile. So for any business owners that are out there and might have had a little trepidation about jumping in, um, when you create a business page, there is no link to you as the person. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, if, if I do have a business page for my company, so um, by me being the administrator of that page, folks who like my business page can't see my vacation pictures. They can't mm -hmm. see anything that has to do with me personally. Yeah. And I know um, for small business owners that sometimes is a fear, you know, what, sure. what, what can people find out about me? Sure. Kind of the, you know, the wizard behind the screen, absolutely, right? Like yeah, yeah. So, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, you're safe um, from that perspective. But, but definitely, you know, to your point, business pages are a great way to present the brand additionally um, mm -hmm. to a website, right? Your website should always be your call to action where you want to drive people to do whatever it is that you need them to do. Buy your product, you know, donate money, run the race, whatever it is. And so these other social media platforms are kind of like spokes in a wagon wheel um, and they are presences for your brand or for your company where people can interact with you and really start to engage, um, have conversations conversations with you, build relationships, and really get to know you as the company or the brand, mm -hmm. and then get, you know, gently pushed into the center of that wagon wheel, which is your website. So for business pages, um, you know, the most important thing, once you've set them up um, with the correct settings and you've taken the time to carry your branding over, right? Which I know you've got mm -hmm. um, a lot of background with websites and, and branding is so important with websites mm -hmm. in terms of um, taking your logo and your colors and, and carrying them over. And I always tell people that um, they need to do the same thing with Facebook as sure. well to carry all yep. of that over. But um, it's really gonna come down to content. What are you as the business sharing on that timeline, so kind of the space with all of the content, what are you sharing that's going to really drive interest and mm -hmm. cause somebody to stop and want to interact with that content, whether it's you know entering into the conversation or mm -hmm. simply hitting that, that thumbs up button, right? The sure. like button Absolutely. or sharing your content. Um, that's where we really get into um, where the, the, the 
the uh, the great things happen and the mm -hmm. viral things happen. And I'm going to pause there for just one second. If you have tuned in to this channel, you may be wondering what we're doing here. I'm Michelle Beckham Corbin, and I'm here with Mark McCumber, and we are talking about social media with our new show, Digitally Speaking. So welcome. So getting back to that whole viral nature, um, people who are familiar with using Facebook personally are familiar with the news feed where they see all the information that their friends are posting, the links, the videos, the pictures. Businesses updates also appear in the news feed. So if you do have a business page and your fans interact with your content, with your updates, then think about all of the friends of that person who has commented mm -hmm. all have the ability to see mm -hmm. that statement, right? And so what you're doing is you're increasing your reach. You're increasing the universe of people who are seeing what you, the business, has said. And so within every update, there is um, the link back to the Facebook page so that somebody can kind of say, gosh, you know, my friend John's really having this great conversation with Coca-Cola or, you know, some other business. I want to jump in and get into this conversation so they can very easily click and head on over. So much for the six degrees of separation. Yeah, so I, I've, I've heard that it's two degrees here in Cincinnati. Yeah, that's, 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 that's <laughs> what I often say, but in Cincinnati, it's very, very tight. And what, what, what a great and, and unbelievable tool for one as an individual, whether you have a small business or even a large corporation and you're part of that. You can still keep your autonomy. You don't have to share all your private stuff with you. You can target, use it as the tool that it, to some degree, was even devised to do, much like just the social media. It was born out of a lot of the things that happened with MySpace, which was a young kids platform where kids were just using it as a way to communicate and talk about all their hobbies and their favorite things. And then here comes Facebook. That's a whole nother platform that kind of all of a sudden folks that were a bit older that said, hey, wow, I, there's a there's a real uh, tool here that we can use to get our message out, whatever that might be, whether it's an entrepreneur, or whether it's someone who just wants to get a message out or someone um, maybe like myself who has a small business and to some degree I myself have become the brand. I'm mm -hmm. selling of myself, not just the name of a corporation or a corporate organ. You know, and, and a lot of that to be able to get through to all these people and with the, um, the ability to hit a lot of people and then again, all their friends, as you mentioned, is, is an unbelievable tool. So it's going to be really interesting to see where all this goes. And as you say, it's, it's moving very, very quickly. And the more and the faster that everybody jumps online to become educated about it and find out ways that it can help you, um, the best news that at the moment is it's free. Yes, it is. It definitely free, and um, you know there, there's there's a cost of time, right? Mm -hmm. And I always tell people that it's to me it, it's it's like uh, when you have a little child that's learning how to ride a bike. You know, initially it takes a really long time to kind of get them going. The learning like, curve. Yeah, the learning curve. You get the balance and everything. But but once they've got it, and you can actually remove the training wheels and yeah. not run behind them. Start you know, cruising. They're, yeah, they're cruising and, and they're fine. So yep. um, I have to say that the learning curve is kind of steep, and and, and hopefully mm -hmm. this show and and other tools um, out there will help you to kind of make that a little bit uh, less of a, a steep learning curve because there is a lot of information out there. Um, and we hope to help you steer through that information so that you can get to point B much quicker. But um, you know, once you get past that point and you know how to manage these tools, again, whether it's personally or professionally, it's so much easier and it really doesn't take up as much time as you would think. It's, it's just the beginning stages. And much like a lot of the, the programs that have been developed, the software programs that have been developed recently, um, and I won't mention any major manufacturer names, but there are so many of these programs that now uh, are designed to be intuitive. So you, you, it kind of steers you through it. And even if you do make a little bit of a mistake, you can always go back and fix it very quickly. You know, it's unless you post something really bad, but for the most part, you can even, there's even a setting that you can say, well, I want to post this, but I don't want anybody to see it but me, so mm -hmm. I can do a test. 
Yep. You know, you're and, right, and there's and, always that delete button. And there's the delete <laughs> button, so that's always your best friend, the delete button. <laughs> that's right. Although I do have to say that uh, depending on how long something has actually been there before you do hit that delete button, it might have been captured, you know, and by some other folks or some other places. So um, look at your content really quickly and hit mm -hmm. the delete button very fast. I have a, I have a, uh, a professional question for you. Sure. When is Belichick coming along for Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really serious. I, you know, often get myself on it, and I'm in the middle. And sometimes font is very small, and you're typing, and you're going. And it's in the morning, and you, maybe you're working with one eye while the coffee wakes the other eye up, and you're, you're typing. and You don't see something. You post something. And you go, oh man, I misspelled the most common word. I can't even believe it. You know, if I had spell check for Facebook, I'm well, kind of making a joke, but not. But you know, the, the interesting thing is, um, there is one situation where you can actually go in and edit. So if you've got a Facebook page, mm -hmm. so the business or the mm -hmm. brand, mm -hmm. and you've um, created a you know a status sure. update, you've posted sure. some information, yeah. you would think that you would be able to edit that. You mm -hmm. can't. Mm -hmm. But in other situations um, where you personally have commented, let's say after a friend has said something, sure. you can go in and edit that. You can edit that. Yep. And yes. now other people will see a little message on the bottom that says, you know, comment was edited, but it's no big deal. But but yeah, that does and not. Facebook quips back. Oh, we can't spell. You're still learning how to spell. <laughs> but that doesn't make sense to me. You know, why can you edit as a person but mm -hmm. not edit as a business? Probably just the settings. Uh, the, all those settings, the, all those different different filters and settings, which is why, again, our audience sometimes the people that are fearful of getting into Facebook so oh, I don't want anything to do with it. And I was telling the story about a friend who was reluctant to get on Facebook and fought it and fought it and fought it and fought it. And then one day had an epiphany, woke up and said, what was I thinking? Now he's got 5,000 friends or the maximum amount allowable, you know. And, yep, 5,000's a max. 5,000's uh, a max, and he's got 5,000 friends easily, and it has worked to his benefit unbelievably, even though he was a little bit slow to jump on the bandwagon, so to speak. Um, and, and Facebook isn't just the only, um, isn't the only one, but it is certainly the most prevalent one at this particular point. I know there are a couple others. I know Google was trying to give yeah. Facebook a run for their money for a long time with uh, Chrome, I guess it was. Is well, it Chrome or Google, was it? Google Plus, um, Google Plus. And it was interesting because when it came out, I, I want to say it's been about, just about two years now. Um, they came out initially just for beta beta folks, mm -hmm. was, uh, beta testers, and it was an invite-only situation, and um, the initial folks that got in were in the, um, I don't want to, well, I, I was going to use a term that I won't use that's okay. to offend anybody. Yeah, 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 you that's know, right. You hear yeah, kind yeah. Of well, computer patrols. Yes, people, yes, but, yes. But uh -huh. anyway, the technically um, advanced folks mm -hmm. um, were, were really invited to join first, and then a lot of the social mm -hmm. media folks. So I was one of the Earlier people, so I guess I can call myself, you know, technical nerd. That was what I was trying to get away from. But oh, I, I think I will, some people I will call love myself that term. That. Love to call themselves <laughs> by that, that, that name. A techie. Yeah. But uh, so you know, I, that really was Google's response to Facebook. They were mm -hmm. really hoping to give Facebook a run for its money because at that time, folks were very upset with the privacy um, issues. There were not the settings that we have today with Facebook. And so when Google Plus came out, they came out with this whole idea of circles mm -hmm. where you could take all of the people that you're connected to and put them into distinct circles. And then when you posted information, you could determine which circle of, of folks would be privy to what you mm -hmm. were sharing, right? So sure. really making things private mm -hmm. and allowing you to be friends with the boss and be friends with mom, you know, and mm -hmm. be friends with the people that you hang out with on a daily basis, mm -hmm. um, all in one place. Um, but unfortunately, um, it didn't take didn't off. Fly. Yeah, it didn't yeah. take off as, as I think as well as uh, Google was expecting. Um, but the community is still pretty strong out there. I personally, in its current format, don't see it replacing Facebook in yeah. any way. But for the business folks who are using it, they're really reaping the benefits because if sure. you think about it. Google Plus is owned by Google. Mm -hmm. Google is all about search. It's all about keywords. What do we put in the search box to find what we're looking for? Sure. If you have a business and you're posting on Google Plus, you are adding Google juice to your brand, to your name, to your business. So that when people do go into search and they're looking for, you know, local dentist, local plumber, whatever, sure. um, those folks are going to rise to the top in search sure. because they have the Google juice factor sure. going for them. Well, and, and, and I think that 
that leads us into a really, really interesting topic um, as it relates to Facebook and websites and everything because, of course, the new buzz at the moment is search engine optimization, SEO, people mm -hmm. call them. And search engine optimization, for those of you, I'm sure most everyone's heard of it, but it, it's such a critical piece. It's almost a critical path to um, to functioning because let's face it the reason we we do this it's it's a great way to communicate we have our texts we have our Facebook to keep in touch with our friends but as we start to use it professionally one of the things that we try to do is command more presence right. um, whether it be through our websites through our Google and 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 one of the things that's interesting um, not to get too heady at the moment, but the way that the, the spiders that, that sense all this stuff and the way the algorithms and patterns and formulas are written so that uh, these programs function is that um, it's changed a lot dramatically in the last several years so that people are trying to figure out, well, how do I, if I'm going to spend all this time, as you say, you're Time is money too, right, and if right. I'm going to spend all this time linked into my computer, am I doing it just for fun because I want to communicate and I'm having a, a good time through this forum? Then I think most of the people, um, much like myself, when they do spend time on it, are trying to think, hey, how can I get my message out, whatever that may be, and in doing so, how can I position myself better in, in the marketplace, mm -hmm. um, attract maybe more of a market share as a result of that, and it's a very, it's led into a whole new profession for a oh, lot of absolutely, people, yes. and is is monstrous, and is changing so fast that you pe almost can't keep keep up with it. So, uh, I often you know discuss this with with friends. How do I keep my presence? You know, what do I do? And gosh, there are people that just. I mean, bigger corporations and such, full-time staff on this 24-7, constantly doing things to keep themselves in the presence, to keep their optimization so that their name pops up at the top of the list when you do a search. And I, and I know that's a, a, a really hot topic. It is. And, you know, um, just to kind of add to that, there are things that folks can do from a paid perspective that helps to elevate them up in search. And then there are also some things that they can do um, in an organic way, some things that they can do on their own. And I think um, that would be a, the perfect topic for a show. And I, I think one of the other questions that we want to address as we move through in future episodes of the show is uh, when you are a business owner, when should you call in kind of the, the great guns? Yeah. You know, at what point do you stop doing the research on your own mm -hmm. and say, you know what, I'm kind of in, you know, yep. in an area that I really need to bring in the people that, the professionals. I'm on the edge. I'm looking yeah. over the edge. And, and I would say search engine op optimization, you know, I, I'd put my money there, you know. Sure, um, sure. For... I definitely would, would put my money in, in getting some expertise on that. But, but there are some things that you can do that are, that are organic, which mm -hmm. is free. So it's just mm -hmm. kind of knowing, and we'll share those tips when we talk about this in the future, but it's just kind of knowing what, um, what some of those things are that you can do on your own sure. before you have to get to the professionals. But you will need them at some point for SEO, I think. So now that we have your interest, everyone, um, Michelle and I want to thank you again very, very much for, for coming to our show today. And, and it's our maiden voyage, so hopefully you enjoyed it. And you will come back for more because we are going to just touch base on a, a lot of topics that are really, really uh, pertinent to the moment as far as, as far as the digital world. And we're going to try to help you navigate through that. So thank you very much on behalf of ACTV and Michelle and, and myself. Um, we look forward to seeing you next time. So thank Thanks for joining us here today on Digitally Speaking. Mm -hmm.